I'm Allie with Pajamic Beads. Join me as I do this month's kit subscription box project, the Colorful Bloom Necklace. It's gonna go great with lots of different styles and you're learning fringe, ladder stitch, and a combination of different techniques. Remember, if you wanna check out the subscription box or even the kit by itself, get the box because you're paying the same for one kit as you are for three kits in the box. The link will be below in the description. We'll link there for you. Gather up your surprise or your box and let's get ready to get started. So to begin our design, we have on our thread, I'm using a size 10 needle. You can use 10, 11, 12, doesn't matter. Some green dragon thread in a size six. And we're gonna start off with our eight O's and our 15 O's to make our little keyhole here. We are working with a ladder stitch and basically a variation of ladder. We're gonna begin by adding on one and two of our eight OC beads. Letting that drop down next to our stop bead, which is a bead that I put on the thread that is not attached to our project at all. From here, add one 15 OC bead, and then we're gonna add two more of our C beads and one more 15 O. Bring your thread and needle back through the two C beads that you just added, starting from the stop bead and going towards the additional beads that you've added. You can see those kind of lay right against one another. Skip over the 15 and sew through the second two eights that you added. Give a nice tight pull, and that is our first start. From here, we're gonna increase our count from two to three of our eight O's. So we have on a 15, we have on three eight O's, and we're gonna add one more 15. Go ahead and go to the opposite side of the two beads that your thread is currently coming out of. That'll lay those three beads kind of on top, but see how they wanna point a little bit? Skip over the 15 and just grab those three eights. Give a nice tight pull on your thread. You don't wanna ever pull your needle because what that's going to do is damage the thread that's currently in the needle. Grab another 15 and one, two, three, and four of your eights. One more 15, and now is your chance to sew back through those three beads that your thread is currently coming out of. Once you sew through those four, you're gonna skip over the 15, and again, sew through the four eights that you just added. You can see that I pinched them in my hand while I'm doing that. It makes it so they sit nicer and kind of in the row and the 15s pop out to the side. We're gonna build up now to our row of five and then I'm gonna show you how we do this little keyhole. So on goes 15, one, two, three, four, and five, and a 15. Go back through the four beads that your thread is currently coming out of that last row that you just completed. Skip over the 15 and take your needle and thread through those five eighths. Give a nice little tight pull, and that gets those to sit right next to one another. From here, add a 15, and then one and two eighths. We're gonna go back through the row before, but just the last two beads. So your thread's currently coming out the top, you add a 15 and two more beads, and go back through those last two beads in the row. Go down through beads one and two that you just added in there. Give a nice tight pull. See how those two sit right on there? Same thing, we're gonna reverse. Add two beads and one 15. We're gonna go back into the two that our thread are currently coming out of. Get them in a nice tight pull. And then go back through the two beads that we just added. So you can see that's going to leave open two empty spaces right here in the middle of our section. The next thing we're gonna do is add two beads again. So we're gonna add our 15 and then two beads. Go through the two beads that your thread is currently coming out of. Go back down through the two beads that you just added. And we're gonna add three more beads. When we add the three more beads, that is going to get ready to close up our area. 
So the three beads get added because we are going to mirror the five that we had on the opposite side. From here, we're gonna work our way backwards a little bit and then we'll get ready to go forward. So working backward, after putting on your additional three beads, add one 15 and two of your eights. Just like we did on the other side, I'm gonna flip the project so that we can see on this angle. I'm gonna go back through the last two beads of that grouping of five. So through four and five and out towards the end. From here, so back through the two that you just added. And your thread is currently coming out towards the interior of that bead. Add two more eights, one fifteen, and so back through the two that you just added. So we're just basically closing up the gap. Go back through those two that you just added and give a nice tight pull. At this point here, we have that little keyhole and we just need to add the beads together. So we're gonna grab a 15, so down through that original row of five through beads one and two, back up through the two beads that our thread just came out of, give a tight little pull, and you can see we just made that cute little keyhole. From here, run your threading needle up and down through the next row of your ladder stitch, uh, down through beads number three and four on that, or sorry, four and five on that group of five, and now back into getting smaller. 15 goes on, one, two, three, and four eighths, followed by a 15, and then back down the line of five. From here, back up through the four beads, ignoring the 15s always, and then we're gonna downgrade three and down to two. After we downgrade to two, we're gonna to switch to some 11 OC beads and decorate those to get our nice little pops of fringe. After decreasing to two beads, we are going to do the same thing, but we're gonna be using some 11 OC beads. We're gonna come back down the row then, and we're gonna decorate the 11 O's with a little bit of fringe that will sit to the front. We're gonna do three rows of three of our 11s. So coming out here, I'm gonna add one, two, three 11s, not worrying about the 15s because you're not gonna see them. Back through those that group of two, up through the three, so this is true ladder stitch here. One, two, and three. Back into the beads the thread is coming out of from the opposite end. Back through the beads we just added. There's two rows, one, two, three, into the opposite side that your thread is coming out of, progressing through the three that you just added. So that is our group of three. From here, if you're not crazy about the fringe or you wanna change it up, you can just progress right back into your group of two, do your keyhole and continue on. We are going to be attaching our fringe as we build. So rather than coming back into the project and sewing back through the whole thing, we're gonna build our fringe and then get down and do some extra rows as we do more fringe in the front. So think of this as two sides. This is my first side and I'm progressing and I'm working on my second side. What we're gonna do now is we are going to go back through the design and add some fringe. For my fringe, I have some three by five teardrops. I have some three millimeter Jet AB bicones. I have a collection of cranberry pearls, you can see here. And then also some little tiny pastel green two millimeter pearls to add a little bit of a pop. We're not gonna have a set pattern for this. So if that makes you a little crazy, you can make a set pattern. But coming out of the last row of three here, what I want you to do is pick up one more 11-0 and that's gonna work as the base, and then we're gonna add one of our beads. So let's add one of our drops. At the end of a drop, I'm gonna put our 15 out to create a little bit of fringe. We're gonna go back through the drop, back through the 11, and sew back through the first bead of that row. So I'm coming out between beads number two and three on the last row of that ladder stitch. Add an 11, pick up another bead, add a 15, let that drop down next to your project, skip over the 15, 
go back through the bicone, back through the 11, and then sew through the next bead in your line of your ladder stitch. So I'm coming out now between beads one and two from my last row. Adding an 11, grabbing one of my beads, I'll add one of my tiny pearls here. Maybe if I can get it there to pick it up, that'll be easier. Add your 15 to the top, let it drop down on your project. And once again, sew back through the pearl, back through the 11, and then you're coming out bead number one of that last row. As you come out bead number one of the last row, we're gonna jump to our second row of our ladder stitch. I'm gonna grab an 11, and then just like we've been doing, let's add one of my pearls here, add a 15, go down along the line, back through the pearl, back through the 11, and then into the second row. So see how I'm going down bead number one in the second row? And bringing my thread and needle out. As I do so, I'm going to continue adding some more beads to the fringe. So basically between every single bead and connecting the rows, you are going to have a little bit of your fringe. Don't overthink it as far as what bead you add and where. They're all going to look awesome as you go in and add these along the design. So I'm just kind of picking up based on my piece here, adding in my beads, coming off to the edge now after this one, and adding that little fringe basically between every single bead in the design. I'm gonna grab my pearl again, and then when you're at the edge, Once again, you're going from the edge to the next line. Adding in more beads and continuing to add in the last two beads here. When we come back through and snake through the rows, we're gonna add a couple more beads as well and I'll show you those as we get to them. As you exit the last bead here and get ready to put my fringe on, once I go back down through that last bead and the last 11 OC bead here, I'm going to snake backwards. So it's easier if you just kind of flip it over. I'm gonna go back through the design, so going back through row number two from no, row number one. And once my needle and thread comes out the bottom there of row number two, I'm gonna add one more drop, and then I'm gonna sew up through row number one, and then we'll get ready to repeat our little design here. So one more of my pieces gets put on, whichever one I'm gonna put on my pearl to add a little bit more pearl color to the bottom there. And on average, I'm doing about three drops, three pearls, um, three of each bead, I should say, per one. So here I am then going from bead number one, adding in that extra, and then going back down through the next row. Once I'm out through the next row here, it is time to get ready, flipping over the design, making sure that I've gone through all three of the last row of beads here. I'm going to get ready to add my next little uh, oval marquee section. So again, one and two go on. Sew down through that last row of three C beads. Push all of those beads to the front. As you do the design, you want to make sure that all of your beads, as you're going in and adding the design, that they're all facing the same way. So as you finish one side of the design, it should face one way, and the blank should be on the opposite side. I'm going to continue on adding in an additional five sections of my drops with my uh, fringe in between. So as you're building your design, you wanna to get to the point where you have basically two sides. So I have two sides here and I made a little extension. I'll show you how to put on the clasp. And what we're gonna do now is actually join these two sides in the middle. So for my sides, in case you wanna know, I have six units 
basically with five of my little spacers between each. You can see how it's sitting. You can continue on just making it long and do one if you want, but we're gonna bring a little bit more bling down to the bottom of the design. So to bring some more bling down to the bottom here, I am going to basically be connecting the sides and we are going to connect the sides with some ladder stitch and add more of that fringe element to it. This is gonna match really, really well with the beautiful dragonfly earrings also in this month's subscription box. So here down at the end, we're gonna get ready with some 11 O's after doing those two separate units and we are going to stitch on each side once again our units and then start to combine them. As you get five rows of ladder stitch done in the bottom of the design, at the top of the design I also did five rows and then we're gonna add the clasp. I've added on one side. After we do the middle here, I'll show you how to add the clasp on the other side. But both sections, both sides are going to end with five of those ladder stitch units of the three. What we're gonna do now is add it together. So we're gonna actually grab one of our 80 seed beads coming out of the middle of the five, or sorry, that fifth row, we're going to link on to the opposite side. So you're just gonna kind of ignore the other needle that's there, don't worry, we'll come back and we'll get rid of it. And then I'm gonna go in down the bottom here and do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, because that's gonna be about the equivalency, just a tiny bit smaller. And we're gonna do another ladder stitch. So we're gonna go back through the three from the right side, three from the left side, and that middle 80 that we added. And pull that down. From here, go back through the three, or sorry, back through the seven that you've added. And we're gonna just reinforce this with another grouping of seven beads. So see how you get that nice kind of V right there in the middle? We are going to bling that out. So I'm gonna do seven more C beads And we're going to go back through, just ladder stitching, letting this hang out. Back through, reinforcing, going through those seven beads. And nice and tight. So at this point now, our necklaces are combined. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing that we did along the sides here, adding fringe between each one of our beads. If you want to also, you can do it after the fact or at the same time and hang fringe down from this last row, making it a little bit longer, just like your earrings may be, and have it hanging down from there to match the dragonfly earrings to the design of the necklace. So the first thing that I'm gonna do to get my look is to go back through the design, just like we did, and come out between every single one of these beads, add the fringe on, every single one of the beads, add the fringe on, go up through the side here, add the fringe on, up through the side with my other strand, add the fringe on, and get all of these little drops poking out from between the ladder stitch. Just to show in the design here, I've gone and done the bottom. I'm not gonna do the fringe because I just like that kind of little cluster there. And what I'm gonna do is snake back through the ladder stitch so I can sew back through and then come to the other side and get that to have all of the bling as well. After you're done adding that center cluster here, again, if you want to, you can add fringe off the bottom, that's up to you. I'm just gonna keep it very cluster focused. You're going to want to put on your clasp at the end here. So at the end, I've repeated the five units of that ladder stitch, and I've gone in, added one bead, and my clasp. We're gonna do the same thing to this other side here. If you need to, if your thread is short, you can go ahead and tie on extra thread as well. Just take off whatever stop bead you have that you had on there and add your needle to the end. Coming out that last row, go ahead and pick up one of your size eight C beads. Make sure that your clasp is going in and sitting correctly since this is a necklace that has a front and a back. Go through the seed bead, through your clasp, and then you're gonna go back through the seed bead and back through the other side of the ladder stitch. You're gonna repeat this step three times so that way you get it nice and reinforced in there. I'm gonna to have to add a little bit of thread to mine. But you get it nice and reinforced going back through then, back up through your beads, 
and having your class sit right in the middle. The class then will go right here to the end. Clasp that nice box clasp together. Always use a nice clasp when you've taken a while to do the project like this one. And then your necklace is nice and completed for you. When you wear it, all of those fringe pieces will sit facing forward and you'll have that nice cluster in the middle and it'll look great if you have your dragonfly earrings with it. Thanks so much for joining me for this colorful bloom necklace. It's a really fun piece to learn a couple different techniques and I can't wait to see all the, very, the modifications and differences that you guys do in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Remember, if you wanna get the subscription kit box, make sure to look below the video in the links and we'll put a link there that you can subscribe. It's easy to subscribe for a month, to stop your subscription at any time or to continue because you're gonna get three great projects. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more inspirational designs.